Right, welcome. Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Are we seeing another flop in Star Wars in the works? I don't know. Uh, we're here to talk about it. So, Star Wars The High Republic Initiative, which is, as far as I can see, anyway, Project Luminous, has been looming in the background for some time. Yep, looming, luminous, get it? Pa, 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 pa. Um, but apparently the focus is on diversity and representation. Now, there is the announcement trailer, which we're going to watch part of it together. I'm going to stop it and kind of talk through why I think certain elements are dumb. Um, and we're just going to watch it together and discuss it all, really. Uh, this all dropped last night. As you may know, I run this channel all by myself. I also do many other bits and pieces, and I'm currently trying to make a movie. Um, link to that is down below in the description box if you want to pledge your support. So I was a little bit behind on this. Do apologize. Um, but I'm here now. Let's get into it, shall we? Now, Star Wars announced a brand new publishing initiative called The High Republic and made clear the focus of the initiative is on diversity and representation. Now, that is... Um, look, that's inherently bad, okay? Uh, diversity and representation is not bad, but if the publishing initiative is that is the focus, then yes, that is bad. Um, because it should, first and foremost, everyone will agree with this, unless you're an idiot and a moron, Stories. Stories should be good, compelling stories. Should always be the focus to start off with. You can then weave your uh, diversity and representation, kind of gender politics or whatever, in there as well. Um, and it's actually less offensive if you do that. Uh, it's less offensive to the people watching it. Uh, it becomes just part and parcel of the story then, and people actually absorb it better. They're more susceptible to it. So there you go. Please learn. Um, but let's watch this together. Like I said, this is part of the announcement trailer. Um, and we'll just watch it, I'll stop it, and we'll kind of talk through it. We're finding ourselves at a very exciting moment with the Skywalker saga coming to an end. We're at a place of, what's next for Star Wars? One of the things we've always done is be able to use our franchise platforms to explore the creative potential in the Star Wars galaxy. And so, what if publishing was more of an incubation place? And bring in great talent and just let their imaginations run free. Now, I take massive umbrage with that because they, they've always done that, haven't they? That was what Legends were. Um, but now Disney is setting it up as if that's their new thing that they're doing. Uh, but they didn't do that. That was what Legends used to do, the expanded universe. So, bit dumb, but never mind. Also, letting people's imaginations run free completely, unbridled. It's not smart. You guys have been doing that for too long, and the movies were the end result. Not good. Uh, yep, okay. Got to talk over some of this kind of crap. A really unique writers' room where we had diverse voices with very different opinions about. Okay, that's fine, but then let's see what he then follows it up with. About Star Wars. We all love Star Wars, but we're all coming in from very different places. This has been a very free environment for everybody to just throw things out there. We've all done lots of storytelling, but this is unique and really special. The idea that this thing has been simmering for so long. Well, is this the secret history of the galaxy? Yep, it goes way back to the beginning of Star Wars. We gave them essentially a, a blank slate. What would you like to tell? That doesn't sound particularly great. I'm not going to lie. But it doesn't sound bad for the diversity's reasons and things like that. It just sounds a bit like there's no direction, which they've just confirmed. It's like a blank slate. Deal with it. Go make stuff. For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights have the guardians of peace and justice. A line that we've been hearing since 1977. And we thought, you know, what does that look like? It is a golden age where there's much more peace and calm in the galaxy. So we're calling it the High Republic. The description that we've used for the Jedi of this era is that they are the Jedi Knights of the Round Table. But Star Wars isn't just about Jedi, and we will tell stories of new smugglers, new scoundrels, new bounty hunters. The th Literally, everything we already have that people like from the original. Jedi Knights, scoundrels, smugglers, bounty hunters. There's no... No! Remove the archetype threat and the tension really comes from the Republic's borders because the Republic does not extend from one side of the galaxy to the other. It's a bit of a Wild West new frontier. We see a different kind of Jedi that patrols the frontiers and is more of a Texas Ranger. So literally like Alec Guinness on Tatooine. 
we're now bringing in concept artists, illustrators, and visualists the same way that you would when you're making a movie. We even had Ian McKay come down and just do sketch after sketch for us. When you have a guy who designed the look for Darth Maul sketching Jedi for you, it doesn't get any cooler than this. The scale of this initiative is really new for us. We're going to have stories for adults and teens and kids. We're building this out simultaneously across multiple publishers, and it gives us... Um, yeah, okay, just all, it's literally all comics and books and stuff. The ability to tell vast interconnected stories across multiple years. There will be a core group of heroes that will expand over time. There'll be villains. Our main villain are the group called the Nile. We kind of like to refer to them as space Vikings. Of course. Their motto is, you can't take it with you, but we can take it from you. Mm. Our story starts with what we're calling the Great Disaster. It wouldn't be Star Wars without adventure. And there's definitely a series of events that will spin the galaxy into a dangerous new direction, and it'll give the opportunity for heroes to rise up. I really, a Wookiee holding a lightsaber looks dumb. Is that just me? I think it looks a bit silly. Might be cool. Looks a bit silly. The cool thing about this is that there's going to be a story for every Star Wars fan. It's really fun to be able to keep readers on their toes. This era is ripe for storytelling. I mean, look, that's, that's basically, there's not, there's not an awful lot else. They just, oh, that is literally it. They just blabber on about their storytelling that they're going to be doing. Now, let's get into it a little bit more because... If you miss it, it's a blink and you'll miss it situation. And yes, I, I do some research for these videos. But Vice President of Franchise Content and Strategy, James Wow, made it clear in the announcement trailer that diversity and representation were and are a focus of the initiative. Yes and no. Didn't really say, yep, we're focusing in on that. However, it goes further. There was a whiteboard in that video. Did you notice it? Blink and you miss it. But the whiteboard from the writer's room at Skywalker Ranch also reveals their focus would be on diversity and representation. In fact, it's so important, it's on the board twice, under Fiction column and Star Wars Wishes column. Uh, okay. Diversity. Authentically lived in. That's not really it, though. But yeah, diversity. Feelings. Um... Uh, representation, diversity. Bit odd. Bit odd. Why is, why is that on? What? What's going on there? Uh, as for what the actual in, uh, initiative is, it will be set 200 years before the events of The Phantom Menace in an era called The High Republic, according to StarWars.com. It will not overlap any of the filmed features or series currently planned for production. So it's one, one off thing. They're just looking at Marvel Cinematic, basically, I think. But not cinematic, just comic it out. Um... I, I don't know what I don't know what I think about this really. I, I, I saw this initially revealed and I thought right well that makes sense of course why why wouldn't we have a lady on the front of course um, but it's this it's this that that caught me off guard. I just thought because you can't look at a Wookiee and not see Chewbacca can you really? And it just looks a bit dumb. Also if it's two hundred years before uh, the events of the Phantom Menace, Yoda's still alive so things will overlap. They have to. Um, and I don't like the fact that they said this, but Star Wars isn't just about Jedi, and we'll tell stories of new smugglers, new scoundrels, new bounty hunters. It's just the same archetype trope we've already seen. Um, yeah. And they called them the Nile, but I guess they're the Nihil. Um, and these, unfortunately to me, they just give off vibes of uh, the Knights of Ren again. Just dumb things that look cool but don't do anything. So, I don't know. Who knows? Um, I I think there's some uh, some huge kind of focus on there, which maybe shouldn't be there, but you know whatever. Um, it looks alright. It'll be interesting to see how it's received. This is the thing. Like I won't be reading it. This is not for me. I'm not gonna. I, can't, I don't have the time to read any of this stuff anymore. I altered carbon drops on Thursday, and I need to watch that all to review it for you. I simply just don't have the time for this stuff. Um, between that and then going to watch movies to review for you all as well. But this is not for me, but I do think it'll be interesting to see whether this resurrects the Star Wars franchise in people's eyes. Because it might do. Um, but what did you guys think about this? Did you see this picture? Did you think this was dumb? Or was it just me? <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts. 
Um, and again, this this is a bit, you know, this is a bit nauseating. Diversity and diversity and representation is on there twice. I mean, that's, come on now. It doesn't need to be on there twice. Like, we get it. We've seen the movies. We get it. Uh, but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Also, please do help pledge your support for my short film, Blackfields, down below in the description box. Thanks so much, though, guys. If we missed age, take care. Thank <laughs> you.